Hey folks, we just did a video about pocket sets, which is a very effective water set for mink and muskrat. And we're gonna to get to that. But before we do, I wanna to talk to you about best management practices, BMPs as we call them. The Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies and the Wildlife Society, the organization of all of our wild wildlife scientists and biologists, have spent a lot of time and a lot of effort to put together the most complete set of protocols that we call the BMPs of trapping, the best management practices. So we're gonna to go to that video, but anytime you're out trapping, go to this link below and read what these BMPs are. There's a brochure there, there's a website. Doesn't matter the type of set, water set, land set, type of trap, body grip, some sort of leg hold trap, whatever the species, there are best management practices that apply. So they're at the link below. I hope you'll go there and you'll look at those. You'll learn about them if you don't already know them and you'll implement them because if we follow those BMPs, not only does it make all of us better trappers, it provides a better and brighter future for trapping. So let's go out to the creek here, show you how we do these pocket sets. The things I want to show you today is what's called a pocket set. And a pocket set, we're talking mostly mink. Sometimes a muskrat will go and investigate it. But the idea is to find some location that attracts mink. And here you see there's a bridge, an abutment, an old washed out beaver house right behind me. This is the kind of place a mink comes and looks. So I'm going to show you with, with the camera but you go to the water level, if the water level's right here, slightly below the water level, you create a pocket up underneath the bank. And these mink that follow along the shoreline, especially a shallow spot like this where they're gonna hunt, they love holes and pockets. So a mink comes walking down the bank, every little hole he goes and investigates because there might be a mouse in there, there might be a muskrat in there, there could be something there to eat. So you can create a pocket really simply. I just use the boot on my wader or hip boot. I just kick it into this really soft bank and you want it to go up in there. You put your bait in the back of it and you put your trap out in front. And it is actually very simple. So I'm gonna show you how you do it. What I have here, I have a shallow area. I see actually, if you look, there's some mink tracks out on that little knob right there. There's also some muskrat marks. You can see the trail drag there. Well, this whole shallow area right here is where a mink wants to come and he wants to hang out. And the thing I have that I really like is I've got a little bit deeper water right out here where if I put a drowner stake out here, the mink is gonna drown out there. He's gonna be out of sight. No one will ever know any, any different. And I have a great approach right here. Right about there where my foot is, you're gonna see, I'm gonna start building a little bit of a trap platform. Now you have to be thinking about what's the water level gonna do? Am I in a place where the water level's stable, where it's rising, where it's falling? Is, it, is the forecast for rain? Because you wanna give yourself the flexibility of being able to adjust for rising or for rising water levels or dropping water levels. So I'm starting to push down a little bit of a platform here where my trap is going to set. And I'm just working my foot back in there. And you see what I'm doing here? Creating a pocket. And you want it right at about water level. If it's really hard dirt, you're gonna have to, or rocky areas, you're probably gonna have to find a pocket that's already been made by a mink or a muskrat or a beaver or whatever. I wanna make it a rather pronounced opening. I wanna invite that mink to come in here and check this out. So you can see at the back end there, I'm lifting my foot up also to create kind of a, 
an upper part to it. Pull all that mud and dirt out of there. And now I've got a trap platform that I've built right out here. And after this, it's really easy. So what I've done here is I've pushed a stake way into the dirt, mud. Now, if this is a place that has raccoons, you're gonna wanna have a really stout stake. Maybe you wanna have a little cinder block that you put out here on a wire. And then you just put a drowner stake out here. And the idea of a drowning stake is that the animal gets in the trap, they try to swim out here, and they get, say, that, say this is your drowning stake. They come and they swim out here and they get wrapped around it and they can't go anywhere and they drown real quickly. If you have raccoons, think about how you're staking this out. Because you, you, a raccoon is gonna put a lot more pressure on this than a mink. But for right now, we're doing a pocket set for a mink. So you see how far in my foot is there. That's plenty far enough for a pocket set for a mink. And I'm trying to make it a little wider because I want to invite him to come and check that out. So you can see this pocket shape here. It goes way back there. And if you have to, you can get a trowel or use your hand to dig it out. And again, I want to make sure what my water level is. I think this is going to be a pretty stable place. So what I'm going to do now, understand you got to check your state regulations. Some state regulations do not allow the use of certain types of bait. I prefer to take some sort of really smelly bait, whether it's a fish type bait, a paste type bait, and I put it way in the back of this hole. Now, I might have to put it on a stick to get it all the way back up in there. Sometimes, like animals that I catch the prior year, beaver and muskrat, I will keep those carcasses and I'll take a little piece of that meat and I'll put it way back in there. But make sure you're complying with your state regulations as it relates to bait. But the idea, the mink's gonna come play around here. He smells something and he looks at that and his natural curiosity is to go and look in that pocket. So what you do, your natural tendency is to get your one and a half jump trap here and get it ready to go. And since you know that a mink is not a very big critter, you can put that on a pretty easy trigger. I usually keep my index finger under there to Gives me a little bit more control on how sensitive I set that trigger. So there you go. Now, I'm gonna wanna put this trap in either this way with the dog off to the side, the trigger, or this way. It depends on how well it will sit. I, I normally prefer to put it in this way. So the mink is coming like this, and when he steps on that trap right here, he's gonna step on this pan, and when this trigger flies out so that this jaw can come up, he's on this side and his foot is not on that trigger that would throw his foot out of the pan or out of the trap. So. Now you may, if, if you uh, have a place where it's harder to get to deeper water because the number one thing you want with a water set is you want the animal to expire as soon as possible. And the best way to do that is to give them wire to get out to deeper water and have a drowner stake out there. So there you go. Now you see um, this water is murky and muddy so it's a little bit hard to see what I'm doing, but right there. Actually, that's a little bit deeper than I want. So I'm gonna pull some of this mud out and build up this trap base a little higher here. 
I don't want that trapped super deep because he can swim right over the top of it. So I'm gonna build that up some. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna wire this off right here. And I'm trying to hide this both from people to some degree and from the mink so that it doesn't look too crazy of being a, an artificially built structure. And then I know I've got this much wire and chain, so I'm gonna put a drowner stake out there. So right here is really deep water. I know if he gets in that trap, he's gonna come out here and if he gets wrapped around there, he's gonna end up underneath all that debris and his time is short lived. So pocket sets are super easy, super effective. If you wanna catch mink, this is the way to do it. You just come to a spot that attracts mink by its inherent nature find the location that is going to bring a mink to what I call the spot on the spot. So yeah, there's a, a bridge here, there's abutments, and you look at it, it's like, well, that's all equal. Well, right here, I have one of these absolute perfect spots. I got an old beaver house that is now silted in. This attracts every mink that comes by. So he comes there, he smells my bait, my beaver, my fish, whatever. And if you want to, you can put some sort of call lure on there. Like, uh, you know, I know people that use the coyote type call lures, just something strong that this mink, you put it, you know, right here above his, his uh, tunnel or his pocket, and he's gonna come in here and smell that. And then he sees this, his pocket and he's gonna walk in there and the gig's gonna be up. So here's how it works, folks. Pocket set, killer for mink. You dig yourself a little pocket into the bank in a location you know that mink are inherently attracted to. You put your bait way up in the back. You build yourself a very visible pocket with a nice trap platform and you wire it to something stout you put yourself a little drowner stake out there and every mink that comes by, either because of the smell of the bait or just their natural curiosity of going into pockets and tunnels, that's where they find muskrats, that's where they find mice, that's where they find the things that they eat. So he comes swimming up here and he sees that at his eye level, he looks way back in there and he smells something really good. So he keeps coming and keeps coming. And you can see the width of this pocket. He has no choice but to go over the pan of my trap if he wants to get up in that pocket. Well, he springs the trap, he gets caught. First thing he does is with danger, a mink is going to deep water. So he comes out this way and he swims and he gets himself wrapped around that drowner stake. And there he is. He's expired, he's out of sight of airborne predators, he's out of sight of other trappers or other people, and you got yourself a mink, or sometimes even a muskrat. Muskrats are naturally attracted to pockets also because it's a place for them to go and get away from airborne predators. So, can't go wrong with a pocket set. Easy, fast, super productive.